everybody, I'm here today with Director of Innovation Arthur Maimon. We're going to talk a little bit about what he has been doing at Bowles and what he is looking forward to doing um, in the upcoming months and year ahead as we get ready to open our Center for Innovation. So welcome. Um, first time here, as I understand. Yes, thank you, Tyler. Awesome. Well, it's, it's exciting. It's an exciting time. So tell me a little bit, like, what has your year looked like so far? Uh, you know, it's really been very exciting and very welcoming. Um, I'm new to Jacksonville, so it's taken me some time to uh, figure out how to drive uh, from where I live to <laughs> where I work. Uh, now that I've got that sort of under control, I can f refocus on what has to be done here. Um, we have a new building that, that's going up, and that's been just a phenomenal thing to see over the past several months to go from where it was when I first arrived in the summer uh, to where we are now. Um, it's, it's been a really amazing process uh, and a learning experience for me. Uh, and, um, you know, getting to meet all the faculty, the admin, the students, uh, it's been very special. Well, shameless plug <laughs> for all of you. Anybody who's interested out there, come see us. Come see this building. It is literally changing each and every day, yeah. and it is going to transform our campus here. It already has in terms of how we've started thinking about things and how we've started planning for next year. It's been super exciting. Um, so I also know that you've been in the process of planning for outfitting spaces in this building. So what are some of the, what are some of the things that we can look forward to having in there? Uh, well, we're going to have all sorts of really interesting equipment to help us move from uh, a place where, um, you know, we can fabricate small things for robotics clubs uh, to, you know, maybe some small things in the, uh, in the arts department to really like a, a much larger, more robust fabrication environment where we can uh, really incorporate woodworking, metalworking, uh, manufacturing on both the additive and subtractive scales, um, all kinds of really amazing equipment. So uh, that's a process that's ongoing. A lot of equipment has already been ordered and spec'd out for the space. And uh, I'm working closely with um, the architects and the engineers to make sure that the space can accommodate the equipment and that we have everything that we need to be able to hook it up, put it together. So we're really looking to go to the next level of making things on campus. And um, I would certainly think that uh, that lab will probably grow uh, both indoors and hopefully outdoors. I think I have a lot of interesting plans for what we can do uh, outdoors as well. That is fantastic. I mean, you guys can obviously see part of the reason why we liked Arthur so much when we started speaking to him was his ability to not only come up with a vision, but to put a vision in action. I heard a little bit about some Robots from MIT. Ah, what are, yeah. Who are these guys? So we have we have some visitors here. Uh, they're looking for a new home. Um, a few years back, um, MIT acquired some robots from Rethink Robotics, um, and uh, Rethink Robotics uh, put together uh, robots that are designed to work collaboratively with people. They're called Cobots for collaborative robots. Uh, they started off with a robot called Baxter that had two arms and then moved on to Sawyer, uh, which was a warm one-armed robot. Uh, MIT was contracted by the state of Massachusetts to uh, design curriculum for factory workers to help them work with Sawyer side by side. Um, they did that in 2018, uh, COVID hit, and uh, then uh, funding, I think, dropped out for, <laughs> from under them, uh, and they were stuck with uh, three really very capable and um, you know interesting cobots that they decided to part ways with and um, awesome. we've acquired them uh, they are here they took a uh, you know about a 1500 mile journey to get here so we're in the process of getting them up and running and hopefully uh, we'll be able to use them in our new fabrication lab cool. to help teach students and faculty how robots are sort of uh, being used today on the factory floor and in other environments um, and how they're really assisting humans uh, in doing tasks that keep them from, you know, getting hurt, essentially. Sure. So repetitive sure. tasks and things like that. So you said Sawyer, and we have three. Yeah. Do we get to name the other two? Yeah, well, the Sawyer is, is actually uh, the family name. Oh. They're all related. 
So uh, Tom Sawyer. First name's correct. Uh, one of them came with a sticker that said Tom. He's Miss Jess. Uh, yeah, apparently. <laughs> I know that we're in the process of some different course offerings that we're looking at for next year. Can yeah. you tell me a little bit about those? Yeah, so uh, we are uh, going to be offering uh, an engineering course next year uh, designed to sort of leverage this new fabrication space that we have. We want to introduce uh, students interested in engineering to all of the equipment that we'll be offering, um, teach them a little bit about how to design, how engineers design, and how they work through the engineering and design process. Uh, and so it should be a really dynamic and fascinating class for students to be able to uh, live within that space and to create amazing things. We're hoping that this class will uh, evolve into a four-year long program or track for engineering and research here at Bowles. Uh, this is just going to be the first step in that process and uh, so I'm real excited about that. Um, I've, I've, I've developed the curriculum with the help of um, some amazing people uh, that I know in, in, in the curriculum building world uh, and uh, so it's been a, a great process. Uh, so it should be, should be an amazing class. We've also uh, been working hard at developing electives um, that will sort of allow students to come in and be in that space without committing to a year-long or years-long program so they can get like a light version of fabrication and design. Uh, they'll be able to come in and learn how to use some of our additive manufacturing or 3D printing, some of our subtractive manufacturing like laser cutting and milling, uh, and um, the hope is to provide them with like a lighter version of what, what it is that they're going to see uh, in that lab and to inspire them to possibly get involved with engineering, uh, manufacturing, um, hopefully that could lead to internships in the community. Sure. I uh, love it. I mean, it sounds like it's a, it's a broad spectrum that is appealing to a wide range of students, yeah. not just the ones that are planning to potentially apply to MIT, but also ones that just want to learn a little bit more and get their foot in the door. Absolutely. And, and what we want to do is we want to sort of draw a distinction between all of the high-tech offerings that we create in the space, uh, and there are going to be quite a few, um, especially now that we've created our new uh, department, mm -hmm. our Department of Innovation, where a lot of the high-tech courses are sort of going to live. Mm -hmm. uh, anything from computer science to you know, some of the lighter coding type electives, uh, non, the non-AP computer science electives. Uh, we want to we be able to distinguish between the high-tech piece and the fact that we're also uh, tasked in supporting um, non-high-tech mm -hmm. or other disciplines uh, and, and enhancing what it is that they do. And I could talk a little bit more about that. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, let no one ever <laughs> say that bulls dream too small. That's the key. Starting off with some great steps. Really appreciate um, mm -hmm. your time here, giving us a better window into that. Um, it's going to be an amazing space. So thank you for coming in, and thanks to everybody out there for all that you do. Mm -hmm.